world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. I'm delighted to welcome one of my favourite comedians, uh, that's Jeff Norcott, who's here to talk to us about his big forthcoming national tour, Blame the Parents. Good morning to you, Jeff. Morning, Julia. Morning, Love Julia. I think I'm going to have to change a couple of bits of the tour, uh, given recent events. I was, I was going over <laughs> the notes because I was out in the autumn and I'm back out from tomorrow and I was just listening back to the last version of the show and there was a section that started, so the Tories are still ahead in the polls. I thought, well, that's going to have to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, the you, next you, 10 minutes. You do an awful lot of quite topical stuff as well. So, so yeah, you, you're going to have to be changing it all the time. Um, now, I'm, I'm an avid listener to your podcast, What Most People Think, which is which is, I think, frankly, what it is what most people think a lot of the time, and your take on often the latest political events. How much politics, other than the bit you just mentioned there, Tories ahead of the polls, how much politics is in a show that you call I blame the parents, or are we blaming the parents of the Tory MPs now? Well, I do get that. Whenever I do a bit of uh, paid marketing, that, that is the thing that tends to come back to me. Or they blame my parents or, or they just blame yeah. right-wing people in general for most things. <laughs> but, I mean, it's it's a part of the show. I would say that this is probably was already the least kind of big P political show that I've, I've done because I've been talking about politics for, for a long time. And I think there's other, you know, interesting things happening with censorship and, and culture generally. And, and, and you know, as, as the title suggests, a lot of it is, is about, you know, who my parents were and how that made me and, and how that yeah. relates to most people. But you, you have to keep up with events. And, you know, when I was watching yesterday, I just thought, I just thought it was astonishing. The fact that it, it caused him that much trouble when it was a sort of redacted and reduced report. I thought it's like, it was like there was a sex tape where you'd been pixelated, but everyone knew it was you. <laughs> You know, like oh, now we've all got the image in our heads of Boris Johnson in a sex tape. No, I'd, I'd imagine. Well, look, the the uh, Met Police are looking at a lot of stuff. Who knows what went on at these parties, <laughs> Julia? But it was it was crazy. I mean, I think that there are a lot of people that are voting Conservative yeah. and can still think that. At the time, you know, there was this Brexit deadlock and, and he was the guy that seemed to be able to unlock it. But you can also say that you can't just stand up in the Commons and start essentially shouting out things you've read in the comments section on TikTok. I mean, it literally was insane. That Jimmy Savile thing was yeah. insane. I mean, I'm, I'm I mean, laughing. Basically, this is we... the allegation that, yeah, that Keir Starmer, which yeah. was head of the CPS, basically, um, he, he made a decision not to prosecute Jimmy Savile. Now, that that is probably untrue. That is proof. There's been investigations that yeah. that is not what happened. And he would have known that, and he did it anyway. A lot of people, even on his own back bench, is very unhappy with that. Yeah, I, I think that there needs to be in politics. It's the same with old Ian Blackford. You know, there just needs to be the, these standards. And I'm not equivocating between the two things. But you do have to have rules, otherwise things descend. There needs to be the equivalent of a straight red. You know in football, where you go in over the top of the knee and it's like, you know, even the home fans are kind of going... Yeah, well, fair enough, there. yeah. Yeah, okay, there, there well, needs to be a straight red, yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about this from your perspective as, you know, you, know, you came out, I mean, bizarrely, because, you know, we know what the comedy world is like. It was very much left-wing, very much Ramona. It wasn't Ramona, it was Ramona. They went much further. And everybody who voted for Brexit was a racist, xenophobic, ignoramus you came out as a not just a conservative voter but also a brexiteer um amazingly still allowed occasionally on bbc panel shows and even helping to influence the bbc in terms of being a bit more inclusive of of people i, from I, a range I benefited of from diversity quotas no one saw that coming no, least exactly. of all my agent no, exactly um least of all your mum um but i mean <laughs> in in terms of i mean where we are with brexit two years ago last night i was standing on the stage mm. at parliament square wearing for my sins a Union Jack dress that was way too small for me. Um, as you know, 20,000 plus people, you welcomed the moment when we, we left we left the EU. Um, really, really bizarrely, you know, we, we, we don't talk about it as much as we should, perhaps, because we focus on other things. But Brexit is still in the news six mm. years after we voted for it. What did you make of that? Yeah, I mean, it, it is, you get, I think what you still get is a hardcore of people that are still in the trenches, right? You know, they're still looking every day for hashtag Brexit reality. Yeah. Or, you know, you look at the fact that, you know, the way that our economy has grown compared to other countries. There are, there are bits of news on both sides if you want them. I think, you know, I tend to reflect more normal people in that most people have just tried to, to, to kind of move on, really, you know, from, yeah. from, Brexit, but there are people who will 
who will fight this fight forever. One thing I will say about Brexit is I'm not sure that, you know, the next 25 years of, of Britain's life can really be judged within two. But but Twitter's <laughs> not like that. Twitter wants to declare an outright win. And the winner is Remain. I don't think I don't think you're gonna get that within two years. Whether or not this government are making the most of whatever opportunities yeah. there are of Brexit, uh, that's another question um in, entirely. But I've always thought that all I've ever done is talk about how I felt at the time, you know? Yeah. I voted Conservative, I spoke about that. I leant towards Brexit. I wasn't an ideological Brexiteer. And I think that's most people. I yeah. think that is most people that you just go, all right, you know, all right, there's these two, ter- you know, there's these two options. We're going to get shafted either way. I'll go for that one. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. And yet it is still this source of massive debate. And again, now we've had the lockdown debate. But, you know, you, you know, you were one of the people who had the sort of career which was really badly affected by lockdowns, shutting down the pubs, the clubs, the nightclubs, the comedy uh, as stores. Mm. You know, I, I can remember you, you know, you know, planning another, planning a tour, got the emails about it, and then that had yeah. to be cancelled. And you know, this is at a point when you, I mean, like so many people, the guests we've had on the show, careers just, you know, really taking off, and then suddenly being stymied. Massive hit to income, massive hit to, you know, mm. to, to your normal life, being out on on, on the road. How do you feel about the news that while you were being told you cannot see anybody, you can't have a gig, you can't earn a living, the the Prime Minister and all his staff apparently were having a booze up every single night? Yeah, I think I'm not one of those people that gets really angry. I see that it's wrong. I think that it's almost like quite clinical. We go, OK, they've done that. He's got to go. People need to get people need to get fired it is it is hypocritical but i do i still think that there was a point before christmas if they'd have been i mean just had any sense at any point of yeah. just get out ahead of it right yeah. do we think dominic cummings is going to suddenly go oh actually i'm over my beef with the prime minister i'll stop <laughs> leaking stuff yeah you know what i've moved on he doesn't move on from anything yeah. so the the density of these people at the heart of government that seem to think that at every point that they can kind of tidy up their tracks behind them and that in a weird way is is one of the most worrying aspects about the people at the heart of the number 10 administration is that they're showing a fundamental lack of intelligence in the way that they've that they've handled this and i think that you know we can all form moral judgments of of what they've done but the day in day out day out priority for voters is competence and they're not looking like people who possess it Uh, absolutely and i think that's where a lot of people are let's let's take it away from the politics and and talk more about the tour i i blame the parents um you just hate your fourth national tour um tell us about your parents what do we need to know about them well, they were just—they were absolute mavericks. I mean, my dad was a, a one-armed trade union rep. Um, you know, one-armed Jeff. I don't know if he'd have had that nickname in the workplace. It's not uh, to say. In, in, yeah, I don't, I don't know. He, he might have been a, a you know a union rep pulling somebody up for having said that. But he was, uh, you know, he was he was a labour man. But but probably labour in the old style, if you know what I mean. Even even before he passed away, he was sort of finding that the labour brand had moved away from where he was and my mum you know she was brought up by nuns in Streatham which just sounds like a weird musical uh, but it happened (laughs) and she she was a complete maverick she was one of these mums because she was brought up by nuns and they were very sort of sexually repressed she told me way too much stuff about (laughs) sex you know she'd be talking to me about contraception positions and I'd be like that's all well and good I'm 10 I'm 10 mum let's just just let's give it a few years you know but she was sort of determined that I wasn't going to have that repression in my life that she had but like you know and this is a theme in the show is that as parents we overcorrect we go right my dad never said he loved me I'm going to hug you every 15 seconds and I think there's a lot of sons of fathers now that are like do you know what dad you could actually just bury your feelings every once in a while <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly um listen where can people get tickets and where are you playing if you can run rattle through uh, some of the bigger venues so uh, Live Nation, go to Live Nation and you get tickets there. We're going to uh, Cardiff this Sunday. Most of the, the first three dates are sold out Cardiff. We're going to Sheffield, we're going to Portsmouth, we're going to Ipswich. And for me, the absolute mecca at the end of the tour, which is uh, Wimbledon Theatre. A lot, a lot of these funky comics, they go to the Apollo. I'm going to the place where I first saw Christopher Biggins dressed as a woman. That, for me, that's that's the home of comedy. Quite right. I, mean, I think we all can agree with that. Jeff Norcott, I blame the parents. He's a new talk. Thank you so much. Good talk. Hot, Hot talk. talk. Bold talk. Talk radio. Listen on your smart speaker. Watch it live on your smart TV. The world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio.